Okay. Oh, hi. Welcome to another episode of the All-Star Podcast, live with me, Katie Ray. And me, Dr. King. No, look five. Oh, we did it. That was awesome. Anyway, we're excited to be back. Um, we are sorry that we missed you guys last week, but we uh, had we're busy. the... We had, we were we had a good problem. We were busy doing surgeries and stuff, um, and with all good outcomes last week too. Absolutely, so very good. Very exciting. Um, anyway, so thanks. <laughs> thanks for tuning in. You can catch us on Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, iTunes, on all of those things. Yeah. So um, we will answer listener questions. We'll watch some funny videos and um, just talk about some veterinary medicine, topics of your of choosing, business, whatever. So send us your questions right now. We'll answer them live as they come in. And uh, so <laughs> this way, us and us and the it's mics. gonna fall off the table. I don't yell loud enough that I don't need this. There you go. That's perfect. Okay. So. So. Um, so here we are. So we missed. Leave us a review. Send us questions. Leave oh, yeah. us a review. Send us your questions. You can send the questions to <laughs> ASVC podcast, podcast at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Yes. ASVC podcast. Podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can also send it to us on Instagram, Facebook. Respond to this video, right, Shmeow? Yeah. I mean, we're here for you. Answer questions, talk about things that are of interest. Whatever you want. Personal questions, vet questions, business questions, yoga questions. If we know the answer, we'll tell you. We will. And if we don't, that's just it. <laughs> then uh, we won't. <laughs> that's just it. We won't. <laughs> Okay, so last Thursday we weren't. We usually do the podcast on Thursdays, mm -hmm. so we didn't do the podcast. So uh, was mostly because we did C section. We did a C section on some puppies. Uh, on the mother. On the mom to get the puppies. To get the puppies, six puppies. Six puppies, all English over Labrador a pound. Mm -hmm. all, over all over a pound, so pretty large puppies. Yeah, it went great. It did go. It did, it went really. And well. actually, I think that Harrison got footage of the um, surgery, so I think it's going to end up showing up on one of the Day in the Life videos. Oh, that series. That's so, awesome and really gross at the same time, it but is. also beautiful at the same time. It was Hashtag yeah. Mother it's Nature. it's like one of my favorite surgeries, just because there are so many people that get to be involved. Yes. Normally, it's myself, maybe somebody helping or an assistant, a surgical assistant at the time. But like in this process, there's so many hands in the pot, um, and which is necessary in order to get the best outcome. Yes. So and it all it all worked out. It yeah. was Good. She had five chocolates and one black lab, mm -hmm. and I think five of them were boys. One. One was girl, a one girl. girl. Yeah. There's a picture of him. Yeah. So that was fun. That was a good, yeah. very fun, very good, very rewarding, nerve wracking all at the yes, same time. Yes, for sure. So, and because the anesthesia doesn't come without risk, so of course you always have of that. Of course, but yeah, it all it all went pretty well. So, yeah, yeah. So that's why we weren't here. Yeah. And then it was good. So what we else happened? To throw in an episode Tuesday instead of now Tuesday until Thursday. So two, episodes two episodes this, this week. week, double. So um, podcast, yeah. What else? What else did we do this week? We uh, otherwise, I think we had pretty, pretty routine surgeries. We get a, uh, a knee surgery next week. Knee surgery. Those are always fun. Yep, we're doing surgery on a cruciate injury, which is one of the more common causes mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. lameness in a dog. Mm -hmm. So we actually here at the clinic perform an extra capsular repair, which is. Appropriate for a dog under 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. So we're doing surgery on an 18-pound dog yep. to provide stability so the pet can bear weight and recover faster from the... Oh, there's the bay base. Yeah. Look at that. Good Lord. This is a little delayed, so they're going to watch this. And then and then in a couple minutes, they're going to hear us go, Oh, my God, babies. <laughs> anyway. Um, Who doesn't yeah, say that? Otherwise, I think, um, I think it's been a pretty... Pretty solid week for at least me personally. Oh, I'm Just. looking forward to spring weather. It was great this yes. weekend. It was hot. I was like, all right, man, we're turning the corner. This is excellent. And then the past two days, it's been cold again. 40 degrees again because winter is coming. Winter's coming again. Again. 
Winter is already coming back, and uh, classic Indiana. We're going to go straight from winter to 100 degrees and 75% humidity humidity yes. every day until we go right back to 13 below zero. But the pool's open. My pool's open. so Oh, how convenient. At my house. So now my children are going to be swimming in 50-degree weather. I told Eric that I wanted a kiddie pool so that I could just sit in some sort of water I in want our a picture of you in the kiddie pool with... Wilfred would love it. My dog would love it. So Dogs Eric was in general like, love it. Just pick one up on your way home. And I was like, well, it's not going to fit in my car. So then I was like, I'll just buy a new car, get the kiddie pool, and then I'll just, that is, I'll just be no home way. soon. That's Eric logic. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. That's Eric logic. Get a new car to fit the pool in, the 99-cent pool. On the pool. way home. Just on the way home. Just on the way home. Just grab the car to fit the 99-cent pool It'll in the trunk. It'll take 30 minutes, yeah. like tops, you know, because buying and, a car is so fast. Right. And then it benefits everybody. Yeah. I mean, you got the pool for the mm-hmm. dog. Yeah. You got the bigger trunk, which then helps everyone. One, and Everybody. you have a new car. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't be happy? I mean, total that's a Eric total logic. win-win. And he Across was all like, yeah, sure, cool. Yeah, I'll see you when you get home. Yep. So there so you go. So the end of that story was that I'll never buy a new car, and um, <laughs> I'm not getting a pool. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one are happening. Oh, gosh. So, um, so yeah. Um, so this week we have some listener questions, right? Listener questions. Questions, questions from, from the Russell. audience. <laughs> that's it. Okay. Audience questions. questions. Yes, that's the that is our little lead in. Okay, so our question nope. that we have so far is, um, uh, why does my dog lick himself all the time? Right. And I don't know who gave us that question actually. So, so if that was you, thank you. Yes. Um. So why do dogs lick themselves? Multiple reasons. Lots of reasons. So the most common would be allergies. Allergies, and then boredom. Boredom. So licking can be an obsessive compulsive behavior. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was always defined to me as something that's normal behavior done to excess mm-hmm. is an obsessive compulsive behavior. Mm-hmm. So licking is a normal behavior in a dog. Yep. But then they're doing it too much. So then it becomes obsessive compulsive. Correct. Uh, thank God humans don't do that. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Wouldn't it? Don't mind me. I'm nervous. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that would gosh. be really weird. That would be bad. Um, so because it releases endorphins, I didn't know if anybody knew that. So, oh, licking does. When they do that, it releases endorphins, and then it um, it like basically just becomes a feedback loop where it's an addictive behavior. So then it can. Cont- so the yeah. next time, then they're in the same mode, and they yep. or it's soothing. So like they'll do it like before they sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll sit down, and then you'll see them lick their feet or their wrists a lot of times. Sure. Um, and so then it's addicting, so they keep doing it. It makes but, them feel better. And then they can cause lip granulomas and all sorts of yeah, secondary Yeah, that's what it's done to issues. excess, excess. Excess, yes. ex- yeah. So the primary reason, probably most often, that we see is allergies. Allergies, which and is al- very common this time of year. Yeah, allergies, environmental, food allergies, mm-hmm. allergies to the owner. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the house, though. I was going to make a she's the man joke again. <laughs> I'm allergic to the sun. You're allergic to the sun. Yes, deathly, deathly allergic to the sun. <laughs> um, so, yes, allergies in dogs. Very common this time of year. Actually, you know, they, I mean, they can be present year, year round in some dogs. Yep. But yep. Um, they used to think that, out meaning they, meaning dermatologists, mm-hmm. The people, the gods that be in veterinary medicine, used to think that the allergies. The new gods and the old. Yes, the old gods those and the are new. the new. Um, <laughs> used to think that it was a histamine-related problem. So that's why, so, for so long, people would recommend trying like Benadryl mm-hmm. because histamine is a histamine blocker. Mm-hmm. But as all of you out there who've tried Benadryl or other antihistamines know, it didn't work. Mm-mm. So over time, they've been able to figure out that it's not a histamine problem, but it's actually a cytokine problem. So mm-hmm. cytokines get released when the antigens sit on the pet's skin. So they walk through the yard, the pollen gets on their feet, Mm -hmm. it releases the cytokines, the antigens then release cytokines, and the cytokines are what drive the licking behavior. Mm. Then it also, so it drives 
in the brain, the licking behavior, and then also it breaks down the skin barrier. Mm. It's fascinating, I know. That is. So the skin barrier is made up of these cells, and they have the cement between the cells, and the cytokines actually disrupt that membrane, mm-hmm. and then bacteria that live on their skin become just opportunistic. <laughs> they just go, and they create inflammation, which makes you itch even more. Uh-huh, and then you get secondary infections, so you gotta start allergy meds, antibiotics, yeah. Plus or minus some pain meds. So it used to be we could only use Pred because that was the drug that would shut down that mm-hmm. reaction. But the problem with prednisone is it blanket covers the animal. So it covers multiple systems, not just the part of the immune system that's releasing cytokines. So mm-hmm. it worked nicely because it shut down the cytokine yep. release, but it also did all these other Everything things. Everything else. Like made your dog drink more, pee more, yep. all eat more. Yep. Um, and so now Zoetis has... Um, come up with two new products. Well, they've been out for a little while now, but we don't have to use steroids. So there's Apoquil and Cytopoint. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And for all those people out there who don't like drugs, Cytopoint's immunotherapy, so it's antibody therapy. So that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Because And it's just an injection that lasts like two weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that? No, two months. Two months, two months, two months. Yeah, so yeah. it goes, and the first time you use it, it's probably four weeks. But the, the, the dermatologists say the more you use it, the longer you can get out of each injection. That is legit. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, that's very cool. So that's immunotherapy. And then the, um, the other is Apoquil, which is medication. So it's drug therapy. Um, and um, it's an oral tablet, but we don't have all the side effects. We see no side effects associated with, like we did with prednisone, mm-hmm. meaning increased thirst, increased urination, sure. increased appetite. Yep. There are side effects with any drug, but not clinical side effects mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we can appreciate. Yeah, it's There been, are certain cases we don't want to use it. But. We've seen a lot of success with that. Oh, a ton. Mm-hmm. I mean, these dogs are miserable. The dogs that have significant allergy yep. disease, allergic disease, are miserable. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you have food allergies, which or different scenario yep. from the standpoint of the antigens are coming from food. Yep. So you got to get rid of them. Yep. Got to get rid of them. So food trial. Food trial. Yeah, so. That's the biggest. Those are probably the biggest reasons why dogs lick, I would think. Yep. And then controlling the whatever the primary reason is will help hopefully help stop the licking. Right. Exactly. So if they're bored, you can increase walks, plays, playtime. Mental stimulation, Mental stimulation, environmental enrichment, things like that. Yep. Yeah. And then giving them an alternative device, so a different oral fixation device. Like, mm-hmm. at, like So like if your dog is the one who always licks at night. Every time it sits down at night, you sit down and you're going to watch TV, the dog sits next to you, and it starts to lick. So then you just give it something else to do. To so, focus on yeah, it. Instead so of like, its own legs. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then hopefully you can redirect them and get them to do that instead of licking their feet. Or you can do what Eric and I do where you're, you hear the dog licking in the other room and you just go, just go, Bella! <laughs> and then she like stops it and you're like, quit licking your foot! <laughs> yes, there's that too. <laughs> it works every time. I'm just kidding. Oh gosh. That's no, they don't, they don't obsessive lick, but there are times that you're there has been time, you know, everybody's on it. You wake up in the middle of the night to your dog licking something, and I'm like, I don't know what you're licking, but if you don't stop right now. It is, you know. And right that's, now. Yeah, that is the most, <laughs> the most common historical finding is that the owners can't sleep at night. Yeah. So, like, with allergic dogs, that's the most common complaint when they come yep. in is, I can't sleep at night. My dog is licking all night long. Yep. Um, you know, so it's, yeah, it's crazy. that's when it's noticed. Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. It, it's crazy. I mean, it, yeah, it just really messes with people's yep. sleep and everything in their routines. Yep. And so thank you to Zoetis for coming up with these new products. Yes, so um, good. Really appreciate their research. That's good. Okay, research. we don't have any other listener questions, right? No, we got to talk about that one, the 10 questions that. Oh, we, okay, so we are, the, uh, Mr. Harrison found an article um, about the 10 questions that you should ask your vet. So what we're going to do now is try to guess what those 10 questions are, and then we can go through what those questions are and give some just a quick quick answer. So that? Yeah, or I mean, you can do all 10 and go one by one. I think probably going one by one is easier. One by one. So we have to one guess what the first one. question is? Uh, I mean, if you guess one, then I'll... Just go to that one? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, What's a question everybody should ask their veterinarian? Vet. Do you have any animals? <laughs> I don't know. Is now, that one here? <laughs> is it more not about the vet, but like about their own pet? Yeah. It's okay, it's about their own pet. Do you have any pets? They all revolve around the pet. 
they oh, so, the so they're asking vest. questions about so like, their pet to like, the vet. Do I really need to vaccinate my dog? I feel like we're on the what's that show? <laughs> Family Feud. Family Feud. Show yes. me. Show me. Does your dog need vaccines? <laughs> You know? It's totally family it is. feud. Okay. What's Let's, a family feud song? Oh. Because I keep thinking, bah, 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 but that's, that's Price is Right. That's Price is Right. That's Price is Right. No, that's Price, is, that's right. Price is, right. is Right. We got to look it up. Family feud song. Family feud. Talking about. If somebody out there knows family feud, if they just by chance are listening, they need to send us the family feud song. Uh, can we even use Go it? Link. Or is that going to be like. Stamina? Oh, I don't know. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Was that one of the questions? Okay, so should so it's questions about their pet. Should my pet be vaccinated? How often do they need to be examined? Didn't examined? Did examined? Do they really need to be spayed or neutered? <laughs> Can I just brush my dog's teeth? I'm still thinking of game shows where this applies. <laughs> Jeopardy. Um, Jeopardy. What for, is spay or neuter? What is spay or neuter for? Five hundred dollars. Ooh, uh, daily double. Da- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I got it. My brain. Got to get off the game show circuit here. We should do a game show podcast. Let's do that. We should have a special a special podcast episode where it's just a game. game. <gasps> and we can invite people in and they don't know they're going to be on a game. Okay. I'll, let's do that. I like it. I like it, too. Can I'm we start now? <laughs> let's, can we start now? Can we start now? <laughs> Uh, let's just bring in somebody from the hallway. We haven't had a guest in a hot minute. Have well, we? you know, and I am I am working on getting us a guest for Zillis, the company Zillis, which is the um, CBD oil company. Oh, a guest, a guest, a guest. There, there's be a canine. Be our guest. Be our guest. <laughs> Put our thing to the test. <laughs> I don't know the words. Oh my god, I should know the words to that. Okay. Um, <laughs> So um, yeah, they have a they actually have a canine neurosurgeon, a board certified neurosurgeon on their staff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that has done testing with the product. And so the word on the street is we might be able to get her to come in. Sweet. So I'm working on that. That's that would be cool. Wouldn't that be, be cool? cool? Yeah, CBD's all the rage. It's Eric and I, um, actually Eric did. Uh, I had to leave, so I only watched the first like five minutes of it. But he was just walking a documentary called Misunderstood, and it was the differences between hemp and marijuana, and how everybody thinks they're the same thing, but they are. Oh, not. I would say, yeah, I would say. Yeah. A ton of people think they're the same thing. They have a lot of similarities, but the biggest one being, or the biggest difference being that hemp does not have, it has like, it's like, it's got like 0.003 like THC in it and like regular marijuana has like 20 to 30. Like yeah. just an uh, unbelievable difference. Well, yeah. And the, the, and you can use every part of the hemp plant for right. like anything. Yeah. And one of the companies claims i think is i mean is that it's in, like there is no thc detectable yeah so like if you're an athlete or if you're uh, yep. you know then you don't have to be concerned about yeah and like that's uh patagonia uses a lot of hemp to make their clothes because it's oh. so durable and it lasts so long but that's also why it's crazy expensive because they design it to last your lifetime and then potentially your kid's lifetime wow which is pretty legit but that is pretty legit so one of these days i might buy a patagonia sweater and just hope for the best you should buy one and then just keep it. I looked the other day at REI and this one sweater that I really liked, it was like some smart wool thing and it was like $150 for a sweater. Did you use your REI points? I threw up in my mouth a little bit and then just left. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Uh, we bought, what did we buy? I'm sure it was some sort of climbing gear. I was going to say it had to have been climbing gear. It was. But it yeah, we just got another coupon for REI and I was like, you guys got to stop doing this because we always spend it. Yeah, that's their plan. It is. It's working. Give a little to get something. Is that that place is cool. Makes me want to be out outside. It does. Which is funny because you're inside a store. But it makes you. But just be going outside. inside that store makes me like I should get outside more. Yeah. Yes, I know. I can't wait till we have enough practice climbing and stuff that we can start climbing Actually outside. Do it. For real. For realsies. Uh, the only problem is, is that I have to anchor myself to the ground because Eric weighs so much more than me. So, you so if, find he, places where if he falls and he and then there's too much slack in the rope, he'll fall and I literally get ripped off the ground. Well, you're going to have to like chain yourself to some kind of Why boulder. is that funny, Harrison? Really? 
Oh, well, it's listen, hilarious. it's a concern of hers. It's okay? it is a concern because it's, it's my job concern. to make sure exactly. that he's safe. And if I got ripped off the ground, I'm gonna go up and he's gonna crash to the floor. Okay. Moving okay, on, because okay. you guys don't want to hear about me climbing anymore. <laughs> you, have ten, you have ten guesses. Okay, well, we guessed one. Does my yeah, pet I really need one. to be that's... vaccinated? Okay, does your, pet need, does your pet need to be vaccinated? Yeah, was, was that, that one? Correct? There's one that says that's close. Is my pet up to date on shots? I'm going to go ahead and count that as correct. That's oh, correct. No, no, if I'm going back to the well, history, well, I'm bored. Um, okay, but is my pet up to date on shots? Yeah, I mean, that's something you're asking. That's a totally different question than... How often should my pet be vaccinated? That wasn't my question. What was it? My Shh. question was just should my pet be vaccinated, yeah. which can kind I'll of count, be. I'll, I'll okay, we'll count it because we're probably going to pet... struggle from here. Oh, yeah, you're shots. right. Is my pet Check. Up one is my pet overweight? We're on the board. Now explain like why it's important. Oh, you want us to answer the question now? Yeah, yeah. Is it important? What was the question? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can you repeat the question? Um, should, is, should 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 <laughs> is my pet up to date on vaccines? That was a question. Is my pet up to date on shots? Um, ask your veterinarian first of all if you don't know. Second of all, um, most pets uh, other than oh my gosh, okay, where do I start? A lot of the vaccines are done every year, but there are a few that are done every three years. Correct. So um, as long as you have a annual visit to your vet, you're more than likely updated on your shots. More than if likely. it's been over a year, probably missing if one If your two. vet cannot answer that question, you need to find a new vet. You need vet. to find a new vet if your vet does not <laughs> Because know. everybody has reminder systems that tell you yeah. when your vaccines are due. Yes, good point. So then you would know just by calling in. The receptionist or the client mm -hmm. service representative will be able to tell you, hey, yeah, your pet's overdue. Yep, and then we also send out um, email reminders. Yep. And then for people that request it, we can do postcard reminders as well, I mm -hmm. think. Yep. Um, so that we also help try to keep everybody ahead. Just so you know, these are coming up due in a month. These are yes. coming up due in two months. So it's not like, surprise, you're overdue. And a lot of boarding facilities and stuff require updated vaccines. Prior to being used. Prior to being there, yeah. to, to, to go, go in into grooming, boarding, stuff like that. So right. that's another reason why your shots would be up to date. Right. Yep. Does that answer the question, Harrison? Yeah, perfect. Next. Okay. How often does my pet need to be examined? No. Did we did we get it? Or do we do we place the board or is this gonna be our first X? Your first X. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. Okay, you have one. Go um, there's got to be something about spays and neuters in there. Do I need to spay or neuter my pet? No. What? Okay. That's not on the list of ten questions you should ask your vet because that's insanely important. Can we remake this list? Let's listen to the list. Let's keep going, and then we create our own list. Before we continue, how reputable is PetMD? Because they're the ones that made these systems. I have no idea. I don't. I don't. But we'll keep going. We'll make our own list. The, the list is by PetMD. So. Um, Pet is by Pet MD, MD is probably – never mind. I won't even – it's I don't WebMD. Know. It's the same thing as WebMD. Just I was going to say it might be right? run by someone that's not a vet, which be. might it's be an unfair assumption, but that's my gut. It could be a possibility. Know. We don't know. Okay, so what about is my pet overweight? Is my pet – wait a second. Do we really want to cash in on that question? Is yeah, there something yeah, else? Three guesses. So. No, you said we had ten guesses. You can tell, yeah, that's the – that's the, Okay, so – you don't think we should ask that one? Oh God. Okay. Let's just let's just lay out some questions. We'll discuss. We'll, and then we'll see which one we should yeah, propose. It's, it's like group. It's like a group activity. It's like a group. Project. Okay. So. All right. So is my pet overweight? Yep. This cannot be spayed and neuter was not in there. There's um. Let's see here. What else? Does my dog need their teeth cleaned? Yep. That is correct. Oh yes. Oh, oh no. I can't read. <laughs> oh my God. That's horrible. <laughs> The question, okay. the question was, does my pet need a dental cleaning? Oh, sweet. Okay. The, 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 the high possibility is a strong yes. yes. <laughs> Almost always yes. Depending on the animal, 
Um, some dogs would uh, be able to get away with doing a dental cleaning every year and a half, maybe two years, I would say, is, is pretty typical. Year to two years is pretty typical. Then there's some special little babies, like like Dr. King's little Lancy Pants, that yes. needs it every, like, nine months, like, legitimately needs a dental cleaning every nine months. Um, so there's a couple different factors that go into that. Obviously, you don't want a whole lot of tartar buildup and stuff like that because the more the tartar builds, the more the plaque builds, and then the more it gets under the gum line, it can start to um, erode the gum, erode yeah. the gum line, and mm-hmm. then um, you get crown. <laughs> There's a reaction. <laughs> uh, you start to get um, your crown exposure leads to the root exposure. Um, when the gum tooth line, infections. yeah, tooth root infections. Um, and then those teeth need to be extracted and stuff. And then that bacteria can get into the bloodstream, which like when the dental disease becomes like super severe, then that bacteria can lead to heart issues, kidney, kidney issues, and start to cause damage in other organs. I think the thing that is most impressive to the owner probably is chronic pain. Yes. I think like that, that is the thing that's probably the most impressionable. Like when they say you have a patient who has stage three or four periodontal mm-hmm. disease, Maybe they're a seven or eight year old animal. Pretty, yep. still a, a fairly young animal, an mm-hmm. active animal. Yep. That maybe was even more active prior to. Yep. You clean their teeth, you remove the infected yep. teeth and the painful teeth, and a week afterwards, they're when they a come new back dog. In, yeah, they're a new dog. Now they're playing, they're grabbing their toys again. They're, and I think that's such a clinical impression. It's like it's it's a stark difference. Like where yes. it's like holy crap! I didn't even know. Something I didn't was even wrong. know. Right. Yep. You know, because they're aging, so people expect some yeah. decrease in activity level. Yes. And so a lot gets blamed on aging. A ton yep. gets blamed on, oh, they're just quiet. Oh, they're just. I did the same thing with my own dog. Yeah. But then, I mean, and sometimes it's really obvious and you've got odor and the odor changes. And so then the owners are aware. But, I mean, I think what what people remark about is the change in personality and the change mm-hmm. in behavior. And that, oh, my God, they must have been uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah. They now, probably were. Now they are feeling much better. So, um, but we had that one dog who was, had a great looking mouth. Remember? Um, That's how, it's how Winston Graves. Times. And he had a mm-hmm, great looking mm-hmm. mouth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah, he doesn't need a dental. It's and Carl was like, you yeah. know what? And the owner was like, you know what? I just, I just want his teeth examined. Let's just radiograph him because that's what we do with every dental. Yep. And he actually had damage to his roots. Mm-hmm. All of his crowns looked fine. Yep. And he had damage to his roots. And we would never have known that nope. just looking at his mouth from the outside. So those x-rays are so important. So valuable. And it's not the same. Getting a dental where they're not taking x-rays, they would not have identified nope. all of those teeth that were painful. And he'd be back in in six months or so with tooth root abscesses right. and pain all over the place. So And so, you know, it's so important to yep. pay attention to, you know, is when you are pursuing a dental are they doing it the right way? Because it's not the same depending on whether you're at one facility or another facility. Correct. Yeah, you definitely so, need x-rays. And um, and then you also need to be able to, if you extract a tooth, you need to be able to go back and look and say, did I leave part of the tooth in there? Right. Right, because what happens if you leave a, a tooth root tip in, for instance? Yeah, because the, the root is damaged and it's fallen apart and it's broken. So you go in and you take the top half and you don't know that the bottom half is left behind because some of those roots are so teeny, 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 tiny. So without those x-rays, you wouldn't take that. And we've seen that several times where the, the pet had um, a dental cleaning somewhere, yeah. somewhere you know, a year ago, two years ago, right. six months ago. Right. And we'll take x-rays and there's roots left behind. So... Um, what is, the, so what, is, what is leaving the root behind? What does that do for the, what does that mess up? So, or the cap? It can lead to uh, an abscess later. So that little teeny tiny little root almost acts like a kind of like a foreign object, and the body is all like, "Get this sh- out of here!" and mm-hmm. starts an abscess, which then grows as a pocket of pus and bacteria, and grows and grows and grows. And then some dogs you even see that kind of I'm gonna use the word pop. But you can see that little, like, pus pocket pop, and then it comes out, like, the side of their face. And then they've got a hole in their cheek, and that's when you're like, holy, what's happening here? And then we have to go in, take the root out, clean it up, right? start some antibiotics and stuff like that. Just do it right from the start. Do it right the first time. Exactly. Your pet will thank you. Your wallet will thank you. Your, yes, absolutely. Okay, so. That was a long answer. Sorry, that was a long answer, but that's all. But that's uh, the trend of my. We're so passionate about that because. Dentals is one of my favorites. I love dentals. And I just, there's a lack of education about what is a good dental. Yeah. And the cost behind doing an appropriate dental. Yes. And the fact that. You can't just tell a dog to sit still. Let me. Scale your teeth. Ultrasonic scale your teeth. Yeah. It's not going to work. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it, they're, I think you get the, like you said, the biggest reward with uh, those dental cleanings. Yeah. And I think they're really, they're very important. Okay. The so longevity, we, longevity of your, your pet. Oh, for sure. It lies on the teeth. All right, next. Um, so I think I made a mistake. Oh, Uh-oh. no. What did you make? A you mistake. You said, is my pet overweight? And one of the questions says, is my pet a healthy weight? Oh, yes, that's the correct. We definitely named that it. Counts. We got that, that counts. That counts. So good. I'll allow it. <laughs> we'll allow it. The judges will allow it. Um, okay. So is the question is, is my pet a healthy weight? I That's have had this conversation with my mother-in-law several times yep. with her chocolate lab. So I think if you're trying to determine um, if your pet is a healthy weight, there's two super easy ways that you can, you can look at home. Um, Otherwise, you're, there's scales and stuff that veterinarians mm-hmm. can follow. But for me, I think the two easiest ways to just check at home is uh, two things. Number one, you shouldn't quite, you shouldn't really be able to see the ribs, but they should, you should easily be able to feel the ribs. Count them. Uh huh. And count them. Yep. And then if you were to look over the dog from the top, if their head is here and their butt is over here, they should have just a little bit of a waist. Mm-hmm. So if they're a perfect circle and there's no waist, just a little overweight. <laughs> Right? Yes. More than a little, probably. More than a little bit. So yeah. there should you should see a little bit of a waist, and um, you should be able to feel the ribs. Yes. Wilfred has a rib that sticks out. It's like going He's the cheating. wrong direction. He's like, my rib's sticking out. I'm not overweight. Literally, it's the weirdest <laughs> thing. Like, his last rib does this instead of, like, in. Oh, my gosh. Have you ever felt it? Yes. That No, not on Wilfred, but, yes, they yeah. do that. Isn't that Those weird? little floating ribs. So, yeah, and then, like, uh, because my mother-in-law's dog, Jada, she's the sweetest little chocolate lab. Um, She, I think, I think labs tend to be on, they're, like, I don't know if predisposed is the right word, but they tend to be a little on the heavier side. Yeah. So, she's got pretty much no waste, and I can't quite feel the ribs. Yeah. So, every time I see her, Patty's like, how do you think she's doing? I'm like, eh. She's overweight. She's still just a smidge (laughs) overweight. I mean, she's not really bad. I was like, just don't, like, no more for sure. All right. But so they have weight ranges. So yeah. Some dogs do better at the lean ends of their weight ranges than at the middle or to the high end of the mm-hmm. weight range. So sometimes we'll talk to owners about that. But, yeah. For sure. What other ways that you w- would you do? To check weight? Mm-hmm. Um, they typically will pack weight on at their maneuvering. So right here at their mm-hmm. chest, they usually get like a little fat pocket there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other place is their love handles, which is right in front of their pelvis. Mm-hmm. So the wings of their ilium. So they'll get this like, like round. Like a loaf of bread. Yes. Like right there in front of the wings of their ilium on their back. And so those are two common places that they'll pack weight on. And so they I check literally those. look like a loaf of bread. Their yep. spine is down. People will come in because they think they're a mass up. or something. Yeah. 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 You know. For sure. Um, it's like, oh, no, that's just them. Yeah. That's and then, just their love handles. Um, during an exam, um, vets can use the body's condition scoring. Oh, yes. That's a really common question that we get because yeah. on our body like, condition scores. Yes. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and we have that listed and you don't like so we do it out of five, for instance. Um, there's one out of ten and one out of five. You know, so you can do zero to ten or zero to five. We do zero to five at our clinic and we'll put like two out of five, which is a really good score. Yeah. And people will call back and be like, what do you mean you didn't give me a, you only give me a two out of five? five? That is not good. My like, dog is, what is beautiful. Wrong? She is gorgeous. And I'm like, no, no, five out of five is bad. We that's bad. Want, that's, that's morbidly that's obese. That's like it can't walk down the hallway because it looks like a tick and we're going to have to roll it <laughs> instead like of tick. walk it. Like you don't want a five out of five. You want like a two or a two, three. Two, two and a half. Yes. Yeah, somewhere in there. So yeah, in the middle of the ground that is, is what you want. Oh my God, Because then one is question. the direct opposite. They're mal- way too skinny. malnourished and way too skinny. Yeah. Underweight. So anyway, that's that's funny you mentioned that because we get those calls and we're like, oh no no, that's yeah. good. It's, that so that, doesn't yeah, mean that's the way that we bad. would do it. We're not being bad. Okay, what's another question? Um, okay. Um, All right, so we've had dentistry, we've had weight, we've had shots, and no three, spay or neuter. Three, three, four. Is my pet a healthy weight? Is my pet up to date on shots? Does my pet need a dental cleaning? Okay. What else would be a super common question? Um, Should I? heartworm test my dog preventatives does my dog really need preventatives does my dog really need preventatives Hell Why? yeah yeah or is there <gasps> hi mom <laughs> oh patty ray speaking of my mom i was supposed to ask you about that stem cell thing a long time ago 
Speaking of, um, speaking of, we need. To, I need to look into that because there's different thoughts on stem cell. Okay, I need to. Okay. I don't let me forget about it. Yeah. Some I, of the orthopedic uh, surgeons are using it for arthritis, but mm, they're not. It's not harmful, but they're not really sure yet how helpful it is. That's the like latest. But I haven't done any. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <Just kidding. laughs> um, so I've got to go back and look now and see if any, if any of that information has changed. Okay. Okay. So I've got to do that. Don't let me forget. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. So come back to that, mom. Okay. So um, we said heart. Sh- do we, which one do we want to throw out there? The heartworm test, fecal test, heartworm test. Does my dog like need to be on preventives? They don't know about that. They don't know they exist. So their question initially. Does my dog need a nail trim? I know that. <laughs> All right, let's think about it. If you had just gotten a pet, you've you never been a pet owner before. Room. What would you need? What would you have questions about? Oh, what should my dog be eating? What should my dog be eating? No. Yeah, that is correct. Oh! Yay! Oh, that's yes! good. One. That's okay. a good. One. Yeah, the question was. Who wrote these questions? This no one speaks serious. like that. No one speaks that way. They're like, what shall I be feeding my dog? Am I providing okay. the, uh, uh, the proper nutrition for my pets here? <laughs> okay, so what should we be feeding? I think. <laughs> what do you think? You already know it's going to be a joke if I laugh before I even say yes. it. Yes. Um, I think <laughs> this is a joke. I think that you should, uh, I, I think that I would feed an all raw diet. <laughs> oh, shush it. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Okay. Um, I would feed a grain-free diet. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Those are all wrong answers, people. My dog's gluten-free. My dog does not tolerate <laughs> corn. Oh, you know who? You know what else? Uh, my friend's dog is on the keto diet. <laughs> All right, those were all jokes. Yes, okay. The um, realsies. There are so many good formulas out there. Okay, there here's the scoop. When you're at the pet store, the biggest thing you need to keep in mind is that when you're looking at diets, <laughs> it should be AFCO tested. Okay, before you continue, somebody asked on the Instagram stream, it's Koopa Dog. Okay, okay. Koopa Troopa? What supplies do we need to buy when we're first-time pet owners? Oh, what's, oh my gosh, we're getting ready to do that on Thursday. It's almost like they knew. Listen, Thanks, Koopa. Yeah, like we are going to pet people on Thursday. So, okay, so we'll give you a little preview because you're so awesome and you're watching on Instagram. Sneak peek. However, Thursday, we're going to pet people on 146th Street. We're doing a, a video shoot on what should you have prior to bringing your pet home. So, that is so timely. That is. Um, yeah, there's uh, several things. Okay, so can are we, we ready? Can we give any more let's, than that? Oh yeah, we can. Let's let's help this. Let's help the fella out. Help the fella out. Okay. Okay. So you definitely want. Definitely should feed it. Yes. Yeah, so food wise, we are. So we can kind of. <laughs> so we can go back to the question about food. Let's food. just go finish the, the question about food. So AFCO testing. AFCO food. tested food. That food. means that is not something that is required by the companies, but is suggested to be done. If you buy a food that is not AFCO tested, they did not take the time to run it through trials. And what the AFCO testing does is it says not only did the dog survive on the food, but it did well on the food. So if you claim that this food is for all life stages, then all all life life stages stages. were tested and the dogs not only survived, but they did well. Mm. So um, that's a simple way of thinking about it. So if it's AFCO tested, it's it's probably a good food. Um, There are some foods that have – some food companies that have more um, uh, – What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. They remove call uh, recalls. Recalls and recalls happen because the food gets manufactured in different plants, mm. and then they bring the food back together and they put it together. So they might be doing the protein processing over here. They get that. They get that back from the manufacturer. They put it with this over uh-huh, here. They uh-huh. combine it all together. Well, this was contaminated over here, so now you got a recall kind of yep. a thing. So that can happen with some with some companies. So you've got to watch which companies are on recall lists and things like that. Yep. Um, but I would say if you go with some of the major food companies um, in terms of um, – they're, they're spending time and money, a lot of money on research and development. Yep. So Royal Canin, yep. Hills, yep. Um, Purina, mm. I mean, you know, we use, all of these companies have prescription formulas that we use in the hospital, but then they also have levels of food. Mm-hmm. So as you go up their levels. Cheaper food, to more expensive. Yes. And so they serve lots of niches. Um, I always crack up when people talk about 
it makes me laugh when people are like, oh, that food company, you know, it's they're they're putting cr- just you know they're killing animals. That's not in the business best interest. Like no. they're not out there trying to do those yes. things. Um, they spend so much money. They have board certified veterinary nutritionists on board. They're really trying. It makes sense for them to have your pet live as long as possible. Yes. Why? Because yeah. you'll keep buying the food. Exactly. <laughs> so it makes no sense for them to yeah. not do well for you sure. know, um, by your pet. So anyway, side note. Soapbox. My Yeah, my little quick thingy, um, if you just can't decide which brand or what style to go with, um, I, you, I, I always say you, you don't want to get the absolute cheapest and you don't necessarily need the most expensive. Exactly. So shoot for the, like the middle middle high ground and whatever your dog likes and whatever your dog does well on. Right. That's good. Yeah, dogs are food driven. It should want yep. to eat the food. Yep. So so we said Hills, Royal Canin, Purina, there's Merrick, there's Natural Balance, there's We did I had Nala on oh gosh. The it's got a not it's not blue, but it's got a bear eating a salmon on the front. <laughs> Will blue, blue wilderness? No, nope, the bag is blue. Wilderness sounds right. No. Yep. That's my bit. That might be it. So, okay, so that covers food. Food. All right. Okay. You need a toys. Crate. Toys. You need toys. Toys yes. to keep them busy, to um, help train, to uh, stop them from chewing other things. Yep. And so, and you want to rotate your toys. So you rotate need a variety toys. of toys. Don't put all the toys out. Don't go buy 30 toys and put all 30 toys out. You want to put five out and rotate keep them every week. Fresh, keep know? them fresh. So we've got that treats. You can use either like regular plain chicken for like high value treat, which is low calorie, easy on the stomach. Yep. Or they make training treats that are yep. smaller that you can break into small pieces. Smaller little bites. Yeah. You don't need a one milk bone every time the dog does a treat. That's exactly. Gonna be, that's going to lead to our overweightness. Yes. Uh, the crate you said. I yep. think that crate training is very important. It's super for important. multiple reasons, but. Um, yeah, Maybe. it's super important. It's a tool that can it's be a used for the for Allie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, over the lifespan of the pet, so yep. it's if it, it's not cruel and unusual punishment to use a crate. Um, not, and it's Wilfred's favorite spot in the house. Yeah. We don't we call it lock him up. We don't lock him up when we leave the house anymore. And yet Wilfred hangs out in there on a very regular basis. Yeah. It's his safe spot. He loves it. So let's see here. What else do they need? Um, um, leash and collar. Leash and collar. Poop bags to pick up the dog's poop on your walks. Speaking of. Poop bags. Poop bags. Um, we have, um, look at that, right on cue. Bam. Alpha. Dog, dog, dog bags. bags for your all alpha dog yes. needs. So these guys are really cool. You should check them out. They will send you these packs, right? Actually, you know what? Let's send one to Koopa Dog. <gasps> Thanks, Koopa. Yeah, we're sending one. We'll send a pack. We got you. You just, you know what? <laughs> You shoot us your um, address. We're gonna send you some poop bags. There you go. Look at that. It's your poop first bags. thing for good. For what else uh, does pup. a puppy need? Let's see here. Uh, um. I would say um, the things was the question about what to buy at the store for your dog. Like kind of like a right, like what things are needed. Because you wouldn't buy this at the store, but you, what supplies? What supplies? Yeah. A visit to your vet for their exam is a supply. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and you know, and then. Um, just like your regular like grooming supplies, like so you know desensitizing the pet to like brushing, nail trimming, trimming shampoo, you know, so having those things on bo- baths like, around your house. Yep. Um, and then of course clicker training. I don't know anything about so, that, but yeah, getting a clicker, getting Karen Pryor's book, getting started with clicker training would be mm. a great book to get. Consulting it's like a, APC. It's a two page read. Yes, consulting our, APC. Our behavior. Two page read. It's a two day read. Sorry. Two page day read. Yes. Uh, it'll only take you two days to read it, but it's a great book. It explains the logic behind how dogs think. And so then, therefore, you keep from reinforcing things you did not want. Yes. So really, it's all about the owner knowing how the dog thinks sure. and learns, and then you don't make mistakes. It's legit. So um, I think that's about it. But good. stay tuned for Thursday because we're going to be putting that out there on yeah. Thursday. Um, yes. So not it's not being on Thursday. Filmed Thursday. We're it's not being filmed release Thursday. It. When are we releasing it? Whatever Harrison feels like it. <laughs> Probably the week after that. Cool. Okay. That's a good question. All right. So another thing that's on the list. Another thing that would be on that list. How many questions is that? Five? Um, I think we're at five. You're at, yeah, that was, you're, you can have five guests. We have four out of five right now. Okay. So if I was sitting in a room, 
asking a question from my veterinarian. How much exercise did my dog get? I don't know. I'm trying to think what people ask me in the room. Um, is it okay for my dog to go to dog barks? How often should my dog get groomed? Um, what else? Does do my I dog ask? love me? Does my dog love me? Um, what else? What else? What else? I feel like there's got to be a broader question, but I don't. Why is this so expensive? <laughs> Why is it so expensive? Ah! Is that is that one? I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be something like that. It, how much is today's? How much is it going to cost? How much does my dog cost? Or no, like the visit, like how taking care. How much does like, this visit cost? Maybe. I don't know. You're like. I know. You made a noise after I said that. Yeah. Okay, let's do that one. Something about expense. Something about expenses. Why does this cost so much? How much is this going to cost me? Why does uh, why does it why my does dog it work cost so much? Why does my dog not have a job? Why does my why is my dog a freeloader? That is correct. Whoa! Freeloader? <laughs> can, you, can you please explain my bill? Oh. Oh well, yes, I okay. can. Also, actually. again, who phrased this question? Because no one says it like that. Um. Yeah, that's a great thing. Um, this is something that's super common. Because. But there should be no surprises, first of all. There Let's start with that. There shouldn't be any surprises, but people... As a consumer. As a consumer, you want to know what you're getting for your money. Absolutely. The value behind... The value. The value needs to be include? established behind what you're doing. But I'm saying there should be no surprises. So our clients... Oh, yes. ...don't typically ask us that question because it's discussed prior to prior so like to. there would be no like what like kind of reactions yeah right so mm -hmm. it it i mean so i'm just saying there mm -hmm. should be no surprise so as the consumer you don't want to be surprised correct so so when we are putting together um a treatment plan so a pet's going to come in for vaccines an annual a surgery a dental cleaning whatever um we always give the owner an idea of what to expect while they're here Right. The doctor is going to do a full nose to tail exam. Look at everything on the outside. We're going to do such and such vaccines. They are good for this. And then uh, we're going to do annual blood work to check for X, Y, and Z. And so we always explain what we're doing, why are we're doing it, and why is and it the important. value behind Yeah. Behind so doing it's it. not just, thanks for bringing, bringing in Fluffy today. That will be $6,000. <laughs> and they're like, you literally gave one vaccine. And we're like, so cash or card, <laughs> you know? Oh, gosh. So, and, uh, you know, it's it's really good. Oh, we have a question. Okay. Well, that's good, though. Good feedback. Yes, absolutely. Good feedback. Um, okay. So um, let's see here. What's another Harrison branch? What's another? You're having technical difficulties. Oh. Okay. Are we still going? Okay. Well, we'll just keep on with our questions. What were we talking about? So <laughs> we said the bill. That was the one. The bill. Yeah, the expenses. So yeah, I think as long as on on our end, we're um, always very um, we try to be ahead and let everybody. We try to set up clear expectations before because right. clear is kind, unclear is not kind. Right. So, um, and then on, on your end as a consumer, if you are not clear, just ask. Just ask. People, we're happy to explain it. We're happy to explain it. Most people are happy to explain it. And if they can't explain it, find a new vet. Exactly. I don't know. It's just, I just work here. I don't know. Yeah, like that's not appropriate. Yeah. So, plus, so, it, you know, yeah. and then everybody here, but, you know, we believe in the value that we are giving. And that's why we're the best. Well, yeah, exactly. Everybody knows that. What else is another question? I feel okay. like I feel like we should do like one more and then wrap it up. <laughs> okay, so one more on the list would be What would be one more on the list? We've talked about money. Yep. Weight. Food. Food. Dentals. What is another topic? 
big topic. What would be another big topic? I'd I'd say. Can we get a line? Can you? Yeah. Give can us, you give, can us, you a give us a line? Give us a hint. Yeah, give us a hint. Hit us. Um, I don't know what else to... Give us the... Let's see, we didn't talk about anything with grooming. Hmm. And we didn't talk about anything. So we talked about teeth. We talked about the exam. We talked about the bill. We talked about food. And there's nothing about surgery? There's nothing about preventives. There is. See, he's smiling. There is something about preventatives. What flea slash tick meds do you recommend for, your, for my pets? There Nicely we go. Done. Okay. okay. Also, before we continue, it's over. You have to walk in the sketch up one. Um, Patty Ray asked, do, for a friend, is, re, is reverse osmosis water okay for dogs? Interesting. Reverse what? Osmosis water? I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, she's giving this me, is a question we don't know the answer to. She's giving me two questions now that I have to figure out. Oh, yes. I don't know the to. Great question, Mom. I don't know. Okay. So. I'm, I mean, it's water, so, like, it's cool, right? <laughs> don't say that yet. We don't know. What's special about it? Okay. It's got to be fine. It's water. We'll figure it out. We're, gonna, we're coming back with those two questions next on Thursday. All right. We'll come back. Answers to those questions. To that. So, best flea and tick and heartworm prevention. Best flea Ready, and go. tick, heartworm. Flea, just flea and tick, heartworm prevention? Do you do flea I mean, and tick? I mean, flea and tick. Go for it. Do I do flea and tick? Yes. Now I'll afraid get some Perica. Okay. Which I have been uh, very happy with. It covers the most ticks. covers your fleas pretty well. And then um, it's in a chewable so that mm-hmm. they'll eat it. And unlike a lot of the other products that we have tried, uh, they'll actually eat the Semperica. Yep. And a lot of other um, tablets and stuff are um, still so hard to give to your pet because your pet doesn't want to eat it. Right. So, like, some of the other ones, I mean, I, I almost had to, like, cut them into, like, tenths and then mix it with some sort of peanut butter cheese concoction for my dogs to eat it. And it still was, like, hard to, like, I had to sit there for ten minutes making sure that they got it. Yeah. Semperica, I just put in their food bowl and they eat it. Eat it. So do mine. So I really, I really enjoy that. So palatability is good with Semperica. Mm-hmm. You're right. It covers all the species of ticks. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. monthly. Yep. And um, it has excellent flea control, so it kills the fleas before they have a chance to reproduce. Yep. It's in a drug class with a couple other oral flea and ticks. So we didn't used to have oral flea and tick products. Mm-hmm. So it's made by Zoetis. Yep. Um, and it, um, there's also Credilio, Brevecto, and Nexgard in that yep. drug class. And they're all orals. Yeah. But for the cost, yes, and for what the product does and the for you, coverage, it's, yeah, yeah, I've been really happy with Semperica. Yeah, so we as a clinic, that's what we use. We're pretty happy with it. Um, heartworm, sorry, um, and then heartworm, we really like ProHeart. ProHeart, it's an injection um, that lasts for six months. For mm-hmm. now, for now, for now, hint, foreshadowing. Hint. For now, it's a six-month injection, so you only you, instead of giving two pills every month, you only have to give one, and then that way you don't have to, if you forget and you oh shoot that was supposed to be given two weeks ago, your heartworm coverage is still there. Yes, yeah, so it is. It's really helpful for us in terms of um, heartworm resistance, preventing heartworm mm-hmm. resistance, and then owner and pet compliance. So yep. then that's why I use it because I can't remember to give the heartworm prevention. She can barely remember to take it home to give to her pets. By the way, All so. Right. <laughs> We we have to have it drawn up, ready to go, put it in the fridge. And there I have <laughs> there put notes, notes on, on her car keys, on her car door, <laughs> inside the car. Like Yes, it's a problem. But we get there. But that's the type of support we give each other, right? That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. So ProHeart takes all of that out of the equation. It's going to last. It's, it's Safety studies are, are great. Yep. Um, it's going to last a longer than six months. So you do have a wiggle room window. So it's not like you have to come in six months on the, on day, the day, which is another thing I can't get done. Yes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer for me. When they come up with possibly bringing out maybe a f- in the future – Maybe something like a year-round injection, uh, maybe? I don't know. I'm thinking Zoetis is so in- innovative. Yep. Possibly there might be something like that used in Europe. Hashtag sign me up. Yeah. 
totally. Hashtag sign my dogs up. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, I am totally using Pro Heart 12. That's legit. I mean, not that that's the name of it or that it's actually really coming. But it would be really cool. I think that you should start that. I think you're on to something. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so we're doing it if it comes out. Oh, that is, yes, there are quite a few training facilities. You definitely want to get the pet into training. Yes, 100%. So um, as a puppy, you want to do puppy preschool, which is just de- so socialization and desensitization. And we've got some names of some great facilities. Um, so um, pause, for, pause and Play, Alpha Canine University, Ultimate Canine, those are great facilities that will do puppy training, but then also adult training yeah. and then agility, dock yep. diving, games classes. I mean, you could take it to whatever level you want with some of those mm-hmm. facilities. So locally, those are great. I mean, those are the places to start. Sure. Do not wait until the puppy is after 16 weeks of age. You really want to do those things. That's why they call it puppy preschool. They've got to be done before 16 before. weeks of age. Yeah, because there's certain periods that they will go through as they grow. Like. Yep. The windows are slamming shut, the, baby. The windows of socialization and the windows of, uh, what's the fear one? Yeah, fear. Um, just fear and overall. Yeah. So being able to work through those when they come instead of trying to correct things later. Yeah, It's so much easier. Yeah, no, and, and the thought is, and the research shows that if you go through these things between 3 and 16 weeks of age with the dog, that then you prevent all these problems that typically end up showing up as juvenile adults, so like 10, 12, 14 months of age. So you spend this time initially in the beginning with the patient or the pet and jump through all these hoops Yep. Um, because once you get past 16 weeks, the windows close, and mm. then you don't, you're not as successful. So yep. then you're training everything, which is a lot harder. Yeah. So yeah. totally good question. Yeah. All right. All right, let's get so, to our funny videos. I almost did too, because we're quite a ways into this. We could do this all day. Give me some chips and salsa. Especially when people ask questions. It's so helpful because that way we know what people are interested in hearing about. You know, Um, it's so much easier when, yeah. Yeah, we like. Yeah, all these questions that are second nature to us that we we like to be able to help and answer. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to guess them. Okay. Um, there is, is that insert odd behavior normal? Okay. Does my pet need a blood test? Okay, mm, we talked about that. Kind of talked yeah. about Well, um, we mentioned it. Yes, we did. It wasn't its own question, but I mentioned blood work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we did. What are these lumps and bumps? Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good question to ask. And does my pet need a rectal exam? That's one of the 10 questions you should ask your vet. That's what it says. Well, you know, if you're... Again, who wrote those? Well, I think actually, though, for for whoever wrote them, I mean, they're pretty legit. I, I just they're can't imagine... Complete. Oh, my God, I just got a puppy. No. Does he need a rectal exam? I, oh like, I can't imagine that that would be if your first question. If it's an adult question. male, though, it's an appropriate question. For an adult male with in your medical knowledge, but I, I would never think of that. No, but I mean they have prostates. Yeah. Uh, my question for you is how many people know that that's how you would check a prostate on a dog? I don't know. I think they know they check them that way in guys. <laughs> so I'm just thinking. All right, I'm just moving thinking. on. <laughs> All right. Yes, moving on because. No, that's um, good. Yes, we've got. Um, Sometimes I get sad, but then I remember this video exists. Um, do you need this or no? What? I mean, TV. You're talking about yourself, right? Okay. Um, just keep talking. I guess he didn't say the same. So the part of the show where we watch funny videos, we'll describe what's happening. And you'll see our genuine reactions. We have never seen these videos before. So if you're watching, you get to watch them for the first time with us. So this one says, sometimes I get sad, but then I remember this video exists. And it's a little baby dog and a kitty cat's licking his head. Uh, And his tail's wagging. And his tail's wagging. He's like, oh, keep going. That's perfect. Look at his eyes. He's like, What a sweet boy. 
Oh my gosh. He's like the dog is like smiling while the cat's just grooming him and his That's little tail's so cute. wagging. Cute. Oh, that's pretty cute. And then he turns around and goes, <laughs> and it just eats a cat. No, he doesn't. He does not eat the cat. <laughs> oh gosh. Ketchup, Sneaky cat steals nugget. Oh, I think we've seen this one. Take this one. Give it that's pretty right cute. Here, this one. All of a sudden, you Let just see this it. cat paw come Thank up you. and he grabs the chicken nugget and rips it off the plate. He's so stealth about it though. He's like, right here, this one. Tap, tap, so tap, tap. I like how cats when they're going to grab something, they like tap around a couple times first. Right and find it. And then pull it. That's pretty funny. That's cute. That's pretty cute. I just saw this one. Okay, so this golden retriever comes up, lays this bed down, and there's a girl sleeping on a couch that has a puppy kind of curled up with her. I'm guessing it's her puppy. So then, she's like, the Come on, golden get off retriever. Of she's gonna pull her off. Grabs, of <laughs> grabs the puppy, rips her off, puts her on the bed on the floor. <laughs> this is adorable. And then and the big golden uh, retriever attempts to get up. <laughs> that's oh my pretty God, cute. That's so cute. Oh, baby. The big dog tries to oh, then get like, up there. Dog, that's so cute. That's she's pretty like, here's cute. your bed. This will work, but I'm taking the mom. That's Move pretty over. cute. Move. Oh, my. Move over. Flipping gourd. This is Mr. Raccoon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> What I game even. is that from? Is that it's from Mario? Mario. Of course it's Mario. And ah! he's, in. he's going down. And almost in. What almost is he in? in? There we go. Does he please he's tell me he comes out the other side? Or something. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, so this raccoon is on the top of this uh, building and he's going into a gutter, but someone put a Mario tunnel. And music. And mu- music over it, so it looks like the raccoon's crawling into a Mario tunnel. That's hilarious. My sister's dog saw her using a string to play with, and so the kittens now want to use it to wait. And that w- with the cl- kittens, so now he uses it to play with them. Oh my god, this dog wants to play with the kittens. <gasps> oh, that's so cute. She's like, come over here. That's pretty cute. Oh, that so is the dog adorable. just walks around with a string in its mouth, just waiting for the kittens to come get it. Oh my gosh, is that a Ridgeback too? Oh, that's so cute. She's like, let's little go babies. This Come get it. Come get it, little kittens. No, that's cute. Um, oh, yeah. This is, so this isn't, a, this isn't like a funny video, but like I saw this and I was like, good lord. So they need to recapture this. Holy. Oh, it was what we pulled out of a dog today. 109 hair ties, two pairs of underwear, a teddy bear ear, tail and leg, some candy wrappers, pieces of an Easter basket. Okay, that dog was vomiting for sure. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. That's How big happens, is that man? dog? They eat stuff that is, I mean, foreign body surgery is it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you're having a bad day, watch this. Um, are those kittens? Oh my god, they're Oh my them. god! <laughs> the guy's whistling the ants go RG one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. And there's like seven kittens behind this guy just trying to keep up. <laughs> That's cute. That's really cute. Someone yeah. came home to a giant mess in their house. Ah! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> He's got fuzz stuck to his face. Oh my god, that's hilarious. This little dachshund destroyed a bunch of cushions and had fuzz on his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so cute. He looks so sad because you got caught and you getting yelled at. That's pretty cute. OMG. This is a little bunny. Oh my gosh, it's so tiny. Oh, that was a big stretch for a little boy. Oh, he's sleeping upside down. That's hilarious. <sighs> That's adorable. Little sleeping he even bunny. Look real. Oh, ferret, walking a ferret. What? He's walking a ferret. He's gonna go try and. Oh, he's gonna put him. Oh. Oh, it's ferret. His nose trained. Really? 
That's kind of cool because the ferrets can go in and out of a locker. Is he really wait? No. Why train? did he point? Why did he tap on the locker first? Tell him we're going in this locker. I don't know. I bet he could be nose trained. Ali says you can. That is so clever. Wow. Okay. That's so much fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay, there's this hunter. He's in all of his gear. He's around his truck. <laughs> and he sees something, and it's a flying raccoon. It's a flying raccoon. That is hilarious. Yeah, you better watch yourself. Hashtag rabies. Oh, Bellascaris. That's funny. <laughs> okay. Well, Woo! everybody, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you Thursday. We'll be back Thursday. And don't forget to check us out on iTunes. Google. <laughs> Facebook. Um, Spotify. Spotify. And keep your questions coming. Join us for the live podcast because we love your questions. We love engaging with you during the live podcast. And Send us your questions. Yeah. Leave us a review. All right. We'll see you next time. I'm Katie Ray. I'm Dr. King. Have a great week. Bye.